Welcome back. We are excited to have you back here at Basic Bananas headquarters. We've got uh, another awesome episode. Some of the things we're going to be going through are a tip, or well, multiple tips actually on time management, which is crucial. Obviously, the more we can get done, the more productive we are, the more we tend to grow in business and be successful. Uh, we've got a question from one of you awesome audience participants or members, um, which is, the question basically said, my online ads aren't converting, do online ads work anymore? So we go, we pull that one apart and uh, definitely give some really valuable answers on that one. If you have any extra questions and things, feel free to send them through at any point in time too. We always look after, respond to every message that's sent to us. Um, team tip from our intern, so intern insights. We go and mm -hmm. visit Jenny, which is really cool. Um, and she shares uh, her experience as interning, being an intern at Basic Bananas. There's a, a recommendation from you on a, a book. book recommendation, okay, yeah. um, you have to watch it to awesome, see what it is. It's great. Radical book <laughs> recommendation. And then there's a word of wisdom uh, to wrap up, to inspire you to go and change the world, basically. So let's rip into today's episode. So today's tip is about time management. And the reason why is because we did a, a survey recently with our database and we asked what are some of your biggest challenges so that we can help more in that area. And two challenges came out at the top. One was time management and the second one was cash flow. So today we're going to look at five tips that we use here at Basic Finance to help with time management. And then in a future show, we will look at cash flow too. And we have also five tips actually to help with cash flow. So the first one is to do sprints. And what you do is you set your phone whenever you can on let's say a 25 minute timer and you shut out all distractions. I put my phone even on airplane mode and then for 25 minutes, I just focus on exactly what I need to do, whether that is a proposal or writing something or thinking or strategy. So whenever you can fit in a sprint, fit in a sprint. You will get a lot more done if you have no distractions. Number two is to use some sort of a task management app. Here at Basic Bananas, we love using Trello. I love using Trello. It's a free software you can use, and I use it for my all my tasks. Or I believe you use Wonderlist. Yeah, right? Wonderlist. I like using Wonderlist or just trying to schedule things rather than have lists that are too long. So just whack things in the calendar, like set a time for them. So making it out a list and then using Wonderlist is a nice one. Yeah, exactly. It gives and you a ding when you tick something off. It's very Yeah, fulfilling. it's annoying. <laughs> and then number three is setting priorities. And you really, my practice is the night before, I usually look at my weekly projects and what I need to do this week and then I set my priorities for the next day. So when I wake up I already know okay this is what I'm doing today. My mind can already process maybe a little bit in sleep. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Number four is batching your tasks. So if you know that you have to make 10 phone calls, can you just do them all at the same not at the same time but can you just say hey between two and three I'm gonna do all the phone calls rather than doing sporadically throughout the day or maybe also your emails maybe you batch when you respond. You might have three times a day where you check your emails and you just bang it all out. So batching your tasks, I think is super useful. Mm. And the last one, number five, is really understanding and working with your body clock because we actually all have a way of how our bodies work, whether that is you are super energetic in the morning or you're super energetic in the night. And it's actually a DNA thing. We did a test, remember? We where did. Yeah, where, where it showed you. saliva off. Yeah. And it showed you what your DNA is, who your ancestry, etc. But it also showed you if you're more of a morning person or an evening person. And so if you know that you're more functional in the morning, then use those morning hours to do your most productive, important work. If you know that you're more of an evening person, maybe you do the most productive stuff in the night. So just work with your natural body. What's the word? No, there's a word. It's yeah, a really cycle. fancy. It's guess, a fancy word. I, I guess Arcadian rhythm or something that, like that. Yes. But the, it's understanding too. If you, if you miss the time when you have energy in a day, to, uh, miss out on doing high priority tasks, then you, you run out of energy. You get to trying to do these high priority things, and suddenly you you don't have energy. You don't do them. So exactly. knowing when to hit those challenging yeah. tasks when exactly. you're powered up the most. Now next we're going to look at a question that we got sent from one of our viewers. Do you want to look at the question? Let's do it. So question we have here, which was sent through is my online ads aren't converting do online ads work anymore 
Uh, good question. So, well, alone, online ads don't work. You've got to have a really good offer that you're sending people to. So, first of all, online ads definitely work. They're still there. There's just more and more competition. However, most people rush to do things like online ads. They think, everybody thinks the answer to their, their business problems, getting more customers, is AdWords, Facebook ads or Instagram ads or SEO services to drive more people to their website, for example. However, if people land on your website and your offer is terrible, they're not going to convert to sales. It doesn't matter how much traffic you send. Um, also, if you're just expecting people to land on the site and purchase the first second they see you, you're, you're in for a pretty quick lesson. This is why people, they might spend budget on online ads for a few months and then they don't see a return, then they turn them off because you can't justify continually running them. You need to have funnels and things in place and understand that people take different periods of time to make a decision. There's this decision making period where they come from the ad, someone might take three weeks, someone might take six months before they actually action a purchase. So you've got to have these online funnels, all these pieces of the um, the pie. It's like your online ads are like one ingredient to bake a cake, but you need six ingredients to ever end up with an actual cake. Um, this is looking at the whole big marketing picture and even the messaging and everything has to relate. Um, this is just one itty bitty piece of it because uh, yeah, people come to us all the time, don't yeah. they? And they're like, "Can you help us with my online ads or my social media?" And we're like, yeah. "Yeah, we we can, but we're not going to unless we can look at the whole picture with you because." Otherwise, it's like we're going to look at one area and you come back and say, you know, it's not working. We need to look at the whole strategy. That's what we do with Clever Bunch and everything. That's why the thing's a year. Because <laughs> there's so many pieces we have to put in place to make it work. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Um, online ads definitely work, short answer. But you need to have, um, a, a, you know, your whole strategy, funnels yeah. in place. Yeah. Yeah. Now, next, we're going to go behind the scenes here again. And we're going to visit Jenny. And we're going to have some intern insights. Jenny is one of our beautiful interns visiting from Norway. And she has a few lessons that she's going to share with you right now. Hi, um, I'm just about to finish my internship at Basic Bananas. And the most important part that I've learned through my internship is the importance of gratitude and communications and social gatherings. Um, my tips for business owners that want to get interns is um, including them in social gatherings so they feel included in the business. Um, also make how-to videos so they um, don't have to ask that many questions and can work on their own. And also tell them when they've done something good and also when they've done something or something they can do differently in order to improve in the business. Um, and for future interns, um, work hard, stay positive and believe in yourself. It will be an amazing experience. Thank you, Jenny. That was awesome. Jenny's been amazing, such a valuable member of the team. Thanks for everything you have done as an intern for Basic Bananas. And now, Francisca, do you have a book recommendation? Yes. Something you can recommend? I actually Besides do. our own books. <laughs> <laughs> our own books are, of course, the best ones. Okay. I do have the another book. The next best book. The next best one well, is Richard Branson's latest one which came out I believe last year which is called Finding My Virginity. The first one which was 10 years ago written was called Losing My Virginity. Now the second one biography, autobiography is called Finding My Virginity and I was just recently on Necker Island and that's where I got given this book and I just consumed it on the planes home because it's about 40 hours to get back to Sydney <laughs> from Necker Island and I loved it and you know as we know what the main lessons and what Branson is just really good at when you observe how he runs his businesses is that his strategy is he finds an industry that is underwhelming in terms of customer service. So any industry that is just underwhelming where you go and you're like, this is a bit average to service. He finds that industry, he comes into that industry, he then hires the best people that he knows know this industry inside out. So he gets the best people and he comes into the industry to disrupt it with the best people and he takes risks all the time. And that's pretty much how he's grown into all these different industries. It's not by himself knowing all these industries inside out, but finding an industry that needs disruption, going in there, finding the best people to run these businesses, taking risks and blowing customers' minds with customer service and I think these are really good valuable lessons for all of us is how can we continuously do things better, how mm. can we add more value, how can we blow customers mind and how can you even be a little bit more brave with your decision making. Now also do you, to finish up, do you have a word of wisdom? 
Uh, word of wisdom is focus on growth. Now, what um, we were looking at time management and as part of a tip. So the way you use your time and the way we, we see most people using their time in business, this is just having worked with thousands of different businesses over the years. Most people spend most of their time doing reactive stuff, like ticking things off a to-do list that gets stuff done, but it's not proactive that's gonna result in growth. So as you like focus on growth, if you wanna grow, is basically the, the, the word of wisdom. If you look over your to-do list before you do any tasks and ask yourself, could this result in new customers? Put that onto a new to-do list, if it, the answer is yes, and then do that to-do list that could result in new customers before you go and do all, all this reactive stuff because as long as you're generating growth and you're making growth happening and uh, implementing new marketing, you make more money, you have options, you can suddenly pay someone else to do all this other lower priority stuff. Um, focus on growth when you've got money, when you've got growth happening, the world is your oyster, as yeah. someone clever once said. So thank you guys. <laughs> go and make the world your oyster and we will see you on the next episode. Bye for now.